Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome to the uh, Football Auditorium with Scott Schaefer, where uh, now 23 more of these seats have been uh, taken up here, Schaefer, on uh, National Letter of Intent Signing Day. Uh, for you, it may as well be Christmas Day. Yeah, it really is. You know, I think we're all looking forward to sleeping in our own beds and, and, and relaxing and getting to know our families again. Uh, but it has. It's been a great class. Uh, you know, we had an emphasis going in about a year and a half ago where this class needed to be a class of big guys, a class alignment on both sides of the ball. We ended up signing 12 kids, uh, seven on, uh, on defense, five on offense. And those kids are two-way players. Most of them played both offense and defensive line. So really excited about uh, you know being able to target those kids early and then go ahead and land them today. The story there is that you're balancing out toward your optimum numbers in terms of roster management, right? And, and the, over the years, you have to put the focus on different areas. And then you can figure out now that you've got them in the boat where they fit for you because it might be a little while. That's right. You know, and there, there was a lot of clarity created throughout the course of this past season, both for, for better and worse. And I think going into the recruiting process uh, way back a year and a half ago, there's, when, you're, when you're out that, that far, you know, there are some unknowns, but then as you get a little bit closer, you start to figure out, hey, these are the type of players that we need. Was really pleased. You know, not only is this a big class as far as uh, the size of the guys up front, but they're also bright. You know, we talked about uh, football ability, but also intelligence off the field. You know, we have some high standardized tests. We have some GPAs that are at the very top. We have uh, a very smart football team uh, in this freshman class. Always look for team captains and state champions. I know you got a bevy of those again. Yeah, we sure do. And uh, you know, and we've we've gotten some kids from some of the best programs in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's in the north, uh, Mount Carmel, all the way down to the bottom, where, where you look down in St. Thomas Aquinas. A couple of offensive Lauderdale. linemen from there, yeah. Yeah, and everything in between. So, and I was so pleased with the way the coaches and their wives and the families really, uh, really rallied in this recruiting approach. You know, it's not easy when those coaches are on the road. Uh, and to come home and, and understand that, that what we were doing was going to greatly affect our future and have that support from, from these coaches and their wives has just been great. It seems like that is a type of approach that benefits everybody. You're referencing it to, you know, hey, you can have a Saturday or Sunday here where everybody is involved, but it looks like the signees really appreciate the way they're embraced from very early on in the process. Well, you know, we, we, we try to build good relationships with good people, and our number one goal is to go out there and find character, young men of, of character, and that usually starts with some stability at home or some stability, you know, with a coach or somebody in their lives that uh, is of, uh, you know, is really a rock in their lives. So I think some of the battles we won late uh, because what happened this year um, was we identified a lot of very good players before a lot of other schools did. Our coaches did a great job with that. And here at the end, we had you know some of the top-notch programs trying to come in on these kids later in the mm -hmm. process to pull them from us. And it was those relationships that held true to uh, these kids staying with the Orange. I heard a lot of chose over and then filling in the blanks would be SEC schools, so that's always a good sign. Say if you were able to land the Gatorade State Player of the Year in Jordan Fredericks, so a New York guy, some Jersey guys, and as you mentioned, from some of the top programs there when you're talking about Don Bosco and some of the others. Well, there's no doubt about it. You know, I think um, to some degree you want to have a mixed bag of, of uh, kids from different environments. Uh, the one thing that, that was pleasing to me is that some of those elite programs uh, were really interested in sending their kids to us, you know, and I think that there's staying power when uh, coaching staffs are, are saying, hey, look, this is the type of staff that you can be developed in. And I think that had a lot to do with a lot of these kids staying true to, you know, the orange as well. The next step in that, and I would imagine, tell me if, if I'm wrong, but do, do you see that as a source of pride for the program and for your recruiting pitch? You're getting, you know, younger brothers of guys that are here, uh, players that are in close contact with ones that are already on the team, so they must feel good about the experience. Well, I think they do, and I think the other thing that um, you know our coaches have done a nice job is, uh, is these recruits got out on campus last spring. Uh, mm -hmm. So many of them, you know, uh, Jake Pickard's probably the, the best example. You know, he and his family have been here three times. Yeah. And he was committed to Wisconsin. And then when Coach Anderson took the job at Oregon State, it was a free-for-all. And everybody tried to come sure. back in on him. Uh, but Jake called us. And, uh, you know, it came down to the wire. And, and, and he had, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy Harbaugh was, yeah. was, was uh, Michigan. As, as late as two days ago trying to get him to, you know, to, to change. But uh, the family stayed with the Orange. And uh, I think that's that staying power with Bill relationships early and, and them really knowing who we are, the fiber of our coaching staff.
Pickard, a Jersey guy there, locked in as well. And uh, you hear about him and some others when the, the name Chandler Jones can be invoked. Uh, <laughs> I know for you, Coach, he right now is one of the standard bearers of Syracuse football in modern times, right? He comes from Union Endicott High School, uh, long and lean, develops, and he's in the Super Bowl with a ring. That's exactly right. Both both he and Arthur are, are you know guys that we're so proud of. You know, we got two guys with Super Bowl rings that, that mm -hmm. played in this program for us in, in our defense. And, and uh, I do see some of these kids being those types of players, you know. Um, it's just going to be a matter of developmental now. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the one thing that I think is probably uh, the biggest theme in this class is just uh, men of character. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this group of kids, they are tight. And they were, they were you know, helping each other through this decision-making process, too. You know, with the age of social media and Twitter and all those types of things, uh, you can you can get really get a feel for where these kids are, and um, you know I'm getting I'm getting messages saying, hey coach, don't worry, you know the, we're still in, we're all in <laughs> together, and you know Dante Strickland has Georgia coming in trying to change change his mind late, and you know I get word from other guys, hey, coach, don't worry, we got him. So you know it's a different world we live in, <laughs> right. uh, but I think once again those relationships have really uh, proven to be helpful. Ganging up on on Twitter, and the, the last thing, coach, we'll we'll leave you with you. Uh, focused a couple of very specific targets in terms of, you know, a dynamic tight end, and mm -hmm. uh, you got the, the uh, Trey Dunkelberger's yeah. there, uh, a kicker in Sterling Hoffrichter, and a long snapper in Matt Keller. Two of those are already on campus, but fitting specific needs. And there's, n you know, there's no doubt we had, you know, obviously Sam Rogers. It's like he's been here for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guys, you know, he's he's done everything with us, uh, you know, as a football player off the field. You know, per perfect model, but what people forget is just how good of a snapper he was. And mm -hmm. you know that because you never heard about him. You know, a good snapper is always recognized when he makes a mistake, you know, and, and Sammy, you don't remember that. Um, so we're excited about Keller's opportunity, and he's working hard. Uh, we, we had a 6 a.m. Uh, run this morning, and he was doing a good job. I said, shoot, don't you miss uh, reporting to uh, homeroom in the morning? <laughs> you know, <laughs> he goes, ah, right now I do, coach. You know, uh, just great kids. Great to get another Pennsylvania kid and Trey, you know, yeah. uh, very excitable young man that can run, get down the field at the tight end position, like you mentioned. Um, and then Sterling, you know, everybody talks about his ability to kick, but he's a hell of a punter, too. Okay. And, you know, Riley's got another year right now, and it's going to be an interesting uh, competition when we get those guys next to each other. Well, competition I know is important. So, uh, Coach, congratulations. You and your staff put in a lot of work in uh, the recent months. You can catch a breath tonight, and uh, well, spring football's in couple weeks. That's right. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> That's Orange Head Coach uh, Scott Schaefer. More of our coverage of National Letter of Intent Signing Day throughout today on QS.com and our Signing Day special on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel at 3.